My name is Alex Karekis, and I'm an independent filmmaker producing a television series for AMP Media, which is Monterey, California's public access television station. Now, the purpose of this show is to visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten here in Monterey, California, and elsewhere. Now, today is going to be a fascinating journey because I'm on location in a town of Ponsavon, situated in the country of Laos in Southeast Asia. I came here to film these ancient and megalithic stone jars that are scattered amongst the plateau area, which is commonly known as the Plain of Jars. Now, near the town of Ponsavon, there's one site that we're going to visit called Tung Hai Hin, which means stone jars. Now, one of the surprising things that I learned upon arriving to this area is that although there are many jar sites scattered amongst this plateau region, most of them are not accessible, and that's due to the vast amount of unexploded ordnance and war materials that still litter the countryside. And I'll tell you another fascinating thing to see was that many of these recovered bomb and munition parts are being used as home decorations or even as materials to construct homes with. I'll tell you, this is going to be a fascinating journey, and I invite you to trek with me through the Plain of Jars here in the country of Laos. The security of all Southeast Asia will be endangered if Laos loses its neutral independence. Its own safety runs with the safety of us all, in real neutrality observed by all. I want to make it clear to the American people and to all the world that all we want in Laos is peace, not war. A truly neutral government, not a Cold War pawn. A settlement concluded at the conference table, and not on the battlefield. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know.
friends, thus far I've truly had a fascinating and exciting time here at the Plain of Jars. You know, when I started this film project, I was unaware of how intertwined the Plain of Jars is with the conflicts that occurred here in Laos. Well, our journey here today is not about conflicts and war. It is a portal of knowledge, and so for those of you who want to know about what occurred here in those conflicts, it's at your fingertips on the internet. Well, anyways, before we proceed to our first jar site, let's visit the town of Ponsavon. I'll tell you, it's really a fantastic place.
Let me show you an interesting aspect of this jar over here, this large granite or sandstone jar. Look at this over here. This here has a ridge line, almost like a lid could fit on top of it. Right over here, you can see this ridge. Not all of these uh, jars have this configuration. For example, this one over here, take a look at this one over here. What it has is kind of in concave area over here. Right over here, there's a ridge line here forming the top of the jar and then going inward over here. Whereas this jar right over here is completely flat over here on the top. Look at this, it has a flat surface. These I believe are sandstone. Take a look at this right over here. You can see the configuration right over here. These are sandstone jars in this area. Look at this, here's a jar that has been broken open. And then right over here, here's another jar that has been split open. And I tell you, walking around this area, I did find many bomb craters. And the recent history indicates that a lot of these jars were damaged during this uh, bombing phase of the war. Well, before us, we have one of the largest jars in this area. This one here directly in front of us weighs approximately three tons, and it's really a fantastic piece of artwork. But we're very fortunate because right over here, there's a large bomb crater, and fortunately, this large jar survived. But you can tell right here near the epicenter of the crater is right over here some damage jars. It's really unfortunate that they were damaged and we can say that these jars here are a casualty of war. Look at there, there's one that's broken open, there's one broken open over here. Many of the jars here in this area were damaged. What I'm going to do over here is walk a partial circumference of this large crater. Now it might be difficult to get a perspective right over here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk into the crater and we can try to get a feel for how deep and how wide and, or how large it is. So here, here I go. I'm going inside the crater right over here. Now here's a sign identifying this as a crater over here, bomb crater, and we can see it was during the Laotian War here, the secret war in Laos from 1964 to 1973. But here we go, we'll go inside and what we're doing right over here is the epicenter. This is where the bomb buried itself into right here directly in front of me. Now one of the things that you can see from the epicenter here of this crater is this jar before us and you can see that the concussion uh, from the blast of the bomb broke open that jar right over there. Actually several in this area. Okay, what I'm going to do is climb out from the epicenter of this crater over here and we'll see what happened to this jar directly in front of the crater. Here we go, I'm climbing and there you go, that's the vision of the damaged jar right here in front of us. Well, I'm walking through the jar that we've just seen over here. You can see that it's been split in the middle. And look at this jar directly in front of us. It was actually tipped over from its base. There's the bottom right over here. Look at this. The concussion from the bomb blast threw it on its side and broke it open over here.
Well, friends, this is very interesting. Look at this disc over here. What is it? Is it a lid? Does it fit over a jar? Does it fit over this jar? Or was it moved onto this smaller jar from a larger jar? I tell you, it's hard to tell now because the people that built these, that constructed these, are no longer here to tell us our history. But look at this over here. It almost looks like a spiral. Let's follow this line. Let's see where it leads us over here. All right, let's see if it goes into a pattern, a spiral pattern. Oh my goodness, it's broken. Hard to tell, but let's start from over here. Okay, here's a circular pattern. Okay, here's another one. They don't seem to be connected, but they're a series of circles around this object. Let's take a look at the jar over here. It certainly looks like it fits over here. Look at the style here, and or I should say, look at the stone. Again, two sandstones. I don't know. It's hard to say whether this belongs here because I would assume that it would be more even, so to speak. It would completely cover this opening. Well, to me it certainly looks like a lid, but again, it's hard to say. Directly there to our front is that jar with the lid. And right over here is another jar which has a fantastic history. It sits right here at the lip of a large bomb crater. Look at this, my friends. This was a humongous. It was a large bomb that fell right over here. And the bomb blast of this crater ends right over here at the lip of this jar. How did it survive? One would have thought that it would have been smashed to the heavens. But here it is, a lone survivor, a monument to history. I'll tell you, this is really fascinating. I've just discovered something really fascinating. I've seen this here around this area, and my assumption is that it was a dry stream bed. But look at this, my friends. I'll tell you, it's fascinating. It continues over here, and it circles this area. And as I came upon this sign, I see it as it says, trench line. My goodness, this area at one time was a battlefield. This was a military position. And so as I trek around this area called site number one, it becomes more evident, it becomes more clear. Look at this, here is the continuation of the trench line over here. And on that hill is a cave. I'm certain that cave was the command and control center. And right over there are the jars that we saw. So this archeological site was also part of a military battlefield. Right over here was some kind of fighting position. Let's follow this trench line over here. Let's take a look. You see over here it goes this way. So this whole hill seems to have been circled with a trench. And look at this, my goodness, right over here, this is either Yes, this is probably a machine gun fighting position right over here. It can fit four or five people, but look at this. Right next to it is a jar that's broken. So this archaeological site became a casualty of war. I tell you, this is really fascinating. Not only is the old archaeological history fascinating, 
but this modern history that actually is more lost in time is just as interesting. Who fought here? What were the battles about? What were the objectives? How many people perished here? I tell you, all those are fascinating questions, and the answers don't seem to exist today, and this only occurred about 45 or 50 years ago. Friends, I hope you've enjoyed part one of this three-part series of my trek into the plain of jars in the country of Laos. I'll tell you this has been a fascinating journey and there are many surprising twists and turns yet to come. And so I invite you to continue trekking with me through the plain of jars in Laos. <laughs>